Good morning Mr. Chairman, Belloc authorities. Thank you very much for your invitation to this important international congress. I am going to briefly talk about some critical points for the management of Fournier's gangrene, which are decisive for the patient's cure. Although, there are communications from the time of Avicenna. The description of this disease is attributed to Bowring that in 1764 described a case of scrittal severe infection. However, the disease was named after Jean Alfred Fournier, a French who reported in 1883 of five young men who suffered from a progressive gangrene of the penis and scrotum without any apparent cause. Fournier's gangrene was and remains an awful disease with severe complications and a high level of mortality. Fournier gangrene is an extremely rare disease that occurs in 1.6 cases per 100,000 men per year. It is a rare cause of surgical admissions to the hospital. The average age of patients is 50 years, and the ratio of men to women is 10 to 1. 75% of cases have a defined etiology, is a result of the anorectal area, urogenital tract, and genital skin infections and 25% of idiopathic forms, appearing usually in immunocompromised patients with diabetes, obesity and malignant tumors. But the most important reported comorbidity in FG is diabetes, as well as in the perianal region, associated by thrombosis of the feeding arteries, leading to gangrene of the skin and subcutaneous tissue with manifestations of severe intoxication and multiple organ failure. There are two determining factors at the origin of Fournier's gangrene, immunological compromise and bacteriological synergy. Bacterial isolates show a polymicrobial flora in over 80% of cases, with a multitude of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. The most common organisms isolated are Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, and Bactroids fragilis. Diagnosis of Fournier S. gangrene is primarily made by identifying clinical finding, such as the characteristic crepitus and extremely tender lesions. In the early phase of Fournier S. gangrene, pain may seem out of proportion compared to the clinical findings. Its diagnosis is clinical and must be made early although its initial signs are very nonspecific, with fluid edema and pain. Crepitation should be looked for, an unequivocal sign of subcutaneous gas. It presents rapid symptoms of infectious toxicity. Its progression towards skin necrosis is uncertain, from the penis and scrotum, can extend to the perianal region. Inguinal orifices and adjacent muscles with the development of sepsis and multorgan failure. In simple X-rays and CT scan, the presence of gas is usually found, if there are germs that produce it. Checking for gas deep in the soft tissues is an absolute indication for surgical intervention. The Doppler ultrasound helps to evaluate the blood flow of the anatomical structures. Since vascular thrombosis is an indicator sign of ischemic disease and purgers of this condition, the factors of severity and poor prognosis are well established. High body mass index, extraperineal involvement of the infection, hyperleukocytosis, plus 20,000. Elevated C-reactive protein, platelidopenia, sepsis and septic shock. A particular form of Fournier's gangrene is of anorectal origin, from fistulas or abscesses. In addition to its high incidence, it has particular characteristics of diffusion and consequently greater severity, morbidity and mortality. The postulated pathogenetic mechanism of spread of Fournier's infection may involve soft tissues from the perianal region, passing through the levator muscle to then reach the retropubic space in the inguinal region, and from there descend towards the scrittal region, and ascend through the scarpa fascia to infiltrate the anterior abdominal wall in up to 30% of cases, while from behind. The infection can affect both the retrorectal and retroperitoneal space, that is, the infection frequently advances along the Coles ligament and anteriorly along the dardos fascia to involve the scrotum and penis, although in up to 12% of cases, the perineum remains spare. MRI and CT scans are of particular importance because they can provide a more accurate assessment of the extent of disease that can guide the patient to areas of infection that need debridement. An advantage is that space-to-space -space communications 
can be assessed using reconstructed images that define the spread of infections. The common bacterial isolated were Escherichia coli in more than 55% to cases and the treatment should include broad-spectrum antibiotic therapy that, in our opinion, focuses on combating gram-negative bacteria of gastrointestinal origin. Orchectomy is usually not necessary. It remains controversial whether fecal diversion is necessary in patients with Fournier's gangrene. The decision should be considered with measure. In our opinion, a colostomy is indicate to prevent fecal contamination when there is sphincter dysfunction or injury, rectal perforation, poor wound healing, or when regular surgical checkups are not possible. It is important to keep in mind that unlike most urological diseases, the testicles and penis are not affected by this disease, which is due to the independent blood supply of both. In summary, in this paper you can the most import aspects for Faunier disease is much more frequent among males, in fact all patients were males. Mixed flora was characteristic, with predomination of obligate anaerobes, fast and radical excision of necrotic tissue, and broad-spectrum antibiotic therapy probably contributed to the lack of mortality. Orchidectomy was exceptionally necessary. Penis amputation usually may be omitted, in this series of 13 patients, there was no need for amputation of the penis in any of the patients. Subsequent reconstructive surgery allows the closure of even extensive skin defect. Despite all measures and advances, over time, the mortality of this pathology remains high. There are some important critical points to achieve complete healing of the patient. First of all, experience is limited because it is a rare disease, with difficult heterogeneous patterns of early diagnosis. Delaying key points treatment, immediate surgical, extensive debridement, intensified antibiotic therapy, and intensive care medical management. The low frequency of cases limits the use of Fournier Gangren's severity index that will allow the experience to be better evaluated. It may also influence the decision to perform debridements. It would seem that high-volume centers data a greater number of operations, but this aggressive behavior does not ensure better results. There is a trend toward a greater number of orchectomies in low-volume centers. But this is an unfortunate consequence of low experience with Fournier's disease and lack of understanding of the disease process, ways of spread, and overly aggressive initial debridement. As a first concept, it is an entity of clinical imaging diagnosis, marked by its rapid and uncertain evolution to sepsis. The second concept to take is that primary management includes the immediate debridement of all necrotic areas, as far as necessary, because its prognosis depends directly on early diagnosis, and delay in treatment is associated with an estimated mortality between 15% to 40%. But in the presence of septic shock, it can reach up to 90%. It is a true, infectious emergency, which must be complemented with adequate systemic support and antibiotic therapy, adjusted to the expected pollen microbial flora of robes and anaerobes. The third concept is about the multidisciplinary approach, with the assistance of a urologist and surgeon, general and, or colorectal. For evolutionary management of the regional visceral structures involved, reconstructive surgical treatment is performed after the formation of granulation tissue. Includes plastic, reconstructive surgery, which will depend on the area and depth of the wounds for the incorporation of coverage grafts. Where there are multidisciplinary teams made up in adequate nutrition support, better final results are obtained in terms of survival anatomical reconstruction and functional rehabilitation. For finally, primary management of Fournier's gangrene, in the context of emergency room, should be taken as a real infectious emergency and treated by the general surgeon and eventually by a urologist if available, with total debridement of necrotic tissues. The immediate treatment is multidisciplinary. An intensive care unit and taken from the perspective of anatomical reconstruction and functional rehabilitation. Thank you so much for your attention.